In this lesson, we will create a VI which will take an audio input and fade the volume when the user flips the switch. To begin, let's place a while loop down on our block diagram. Inside the loop, we'll quickly set up the DAC assistant to acquire audio input and generate audio output. We can find the DAC assistant in the Express palette or by using the Quick Drop menu. When we place the DAC assistant on the block diagram, a wizard will open. This is where we will configure our DAC task. For our first task, select Acquire Signals and then Analog Input. We'll be acquiring an audio signal, so select Voltage from the drop down list. The next menu is where we select the channels we want to acquire from. In our case, we want the left and right audio input channels. We can select both channels by holding down the control or shift keys while clicking. Once our task has been created, the configuration menu will open. Here we need to change our signal input range to plus minus 2 volts. Then in our timing settings, we'll set the acquisition mode to continuous, and we'll set the samples to read to 10,000 samples, and our sample rate to 100,000 Hz. When we click OK, our DAC task is finalized. Now we'll set up our output task. Drop another DAC assistant on the block diagram, and this time select Generate Signals from the first menu. Select Voltage, and again we'll select the left and right audio channels from our MyDAC device as our output channels. We must configure our signal output range to match our device channels, so again we'll set those to plus minus 2 volts. Set the generation mode in the timing settings for continuous samples and click OK to finalize this task. On our front panel, we will now place a Boolean control for the user to select if he wishes to fade the volume. Now back to our block diagram. We wish to fade the volume when the switch is turned on, but how do we select when to fade and when to leave it the same? We can do this using the case structure. Case structures allow us to branch off certain sections of code, executing those parts while ignoring the rest. Case structures can be found in the Structures subpalette or in the Quick Drop menu. Like the while loop, we must click on the block diagram and drag our mouse to resize our case structure. The green box on the left hand side is called the Selection Terminal. This box determines what case of our code executes depending on the input to the Selection Terminal. The menu at the top allows us to navigate through the different cases. We will use a Boolean control to determine which case runs. Note that it is critical that the terminal of our fade control be inside the while loop so that its value can be read each time through the loop. If left outside, it will only be read once and we would not get the desired behavior. Wire the Boolean control to the select terminal of the case structure. Since our control is a Boolean, there are only two possible conditions, true and false. So LabVIEW has set these as the default cases for our case structure. In the true case, we want to take the data in and multiply by some value to create a fading effect. We can place a multiply function in the case and wire the input and output, but what value do we multiply the signal by? Well, we know we want to start the value at 1 and decrease by some amount. However, how do we know what the previous value was? In LabVIEW, one way of passing data from one iteration of a loop to the next is with the use of shift registers. In order to create a shift register, we right-click on the edge of the loop. In the context menu, we have the term Add Shift Register. Click it. Automatically, two terminals will be created, one on the right side and one on the left. The left side terminal gives us the value from the previous iteration, and the right side will contain the value for the next iteration. The first time through the loop, we want the multiplier to be 1.0, so we will create a constant and connect it to the left terminal of the shift register. We will subtract a value from the multiplier to create the fading effect. So let's make that value 0.01. Connect the output to the multiply function and the right shift register. Notice how the terminals on the right side of the case structure are hollow. This is because we don't have anything connected in the false case. In the false case though, we want nothing to happen. So just wire the two tunnels in that case together. Now we're almost done, but we still have a broken arrow. This is because we have nothing wired to our loop conditional terminal. We want the loop to stop when our fader value reaches zero. Open the quick drop menu and type in range and coerce. Drop the function on the block diagram near the loop conditional terminal. 
Right-click on the upper limit input of the inRange and Coerce function and create a constant. Type a value of 1 into this constant. Do the same for the lower limit input, but type in a value of 0. We want to make sure our limit values are included in our range, so right-click the inRange and Coerce function and make sure both selections are checked. Now wire the multiplier value to the X terminal of the inRange and Coerce block. We want our loop to stop when the multiplier value is 0 or less. The inRange and Coerce function has an output in range that will be high as long as the value wired to the X terminal of the block is between the defined upper and lower limits. To stop our loop, we will wire this inRange output to a NOT function that can be found in the Boolean palette or by using the Quick Drop menu. We can then wire the output of this NOT function to our loop conditional terminal to stop the loop when our multiplier is 0 or less. Right click on the data wire between the case select structure and the DAC output VI and create a graph indicator. Now right click on the multiplier wire outside the case select structure and create an indicator here too. Call this indicator volume level. Now let's run our VI. The audio is at full volume when we first run the program. But when we flip the switch, we see the volume fading slowly. It fades until it reaches zero, and the program stops. In this lesson, we created a volume fader. We utilized a shift register, which allowed us to maintain memory in loop structures. We also used case structures, which allow us to run certain segments of code while ignoring the rest.